And you can actually see this kind of problem from the output log. So if we look over here, it says no only connection for actor net owner test C1. Function server func will not be processed. So this is kind of like a security policy. If you think about it on this map, um, we have two clients here. Does it make sense that this client could call a function on this guy's pawn and send it up here and have effects on that guy's pawn on the server? It doesn't. The only thing he should be able to call is functions for his pawn and have it go up and influence his pawn on the server. He really doesn't have the authority to, to influence this guy's pawn on the server. And so in this way, net owner kind of creates a security system for RPCs and restricts clients to being able to call RPCs only on stuff that they own and should be able to, to mess with on the server. And so the last thing about RPCs to cover is the net owner. With a pawn, which we were testing earlier, the net owner is already set up to be the player control and everything works. But in general, actors don't have a net owner set up. And so you'll see our RPCs just fail to be called. So to show that, let's create a U class. And we'll call it net owner test. It'll inherit from actor. And we need to set this up to be replicated. So we'll create a constructor. And we will set B replicates to true. And we also need a root component. Root component is kind of a standard thing in all actors, and our RPCs don't seem to work without one, so let's just create one. Okay, so we've created our net owner, and what we will do is over at begin play. RPCs will work without you being the net owner but only some of them. So for example, the server can call a net multicast and it will go to all the clients. But if a client wants to call a server RPC on it, it can only do that if it owns the client. So if we go back to the picture, by default, you know, the actor is going to be on all three of these and it can call the net multicast and have it execute everywhere. But if this client wants to travel up the connection to the server, it can't do that unless it's the net owner. So what we will do is we'll call a delayed function for a net multicast. Uh, so I guess first let's create our, our RPGs. So function net multicast. And then what we will do is we'll create a function to call both of these delayed. So we'll say delayed multicast and delayed server. So after this timer goes off, we will call our net multicast and we'll set the timer for three seconds. Doing this pattern timer just gives me some assurances that it'll be on the client and ready to go. So if we wait three seconds, we will call this net multicast. And then we'll do the same thing for the delayed server RPC. Now for the server RPC, we actually only want to call that on a client. So we'll add a check here. So if does not has authority. So if we do not have authority, call that. So if we don't have authority, call the server RPC because it's going to go from the client to the server. And for the multicast case, we actually only want this to do it on the server so that we can prove that networking is happening. So we'll say if has authority and we'll move this up. And we also need to make sure that we call the server and not the multicast for the server. And so in begin play, we will just call both of these functions. So let's implement begin play. So in begin play, we will call delayed multicast. So internally, make sure this is the server and delayed server RPC. Internally, make sure the client is calling this up to the server, or let's say calling this. Okay. So now we can see how this works. The only thing is, by default, there'll be no net owner. And so what we'll do is when a pawn walks really close to this, we will set them as the owner. And when they walk away, we'll remove them as the owner. So that way, when they get close, we can call the function and do a server RPC. When they get far, we can disable that feature. So the actor actually has some convenient virtuals to override for this. As on notify overlap again. So net under test, we will notify when the overlap begins and we'll do the end overlap. We will 
nothing with those. Call their supers. Okay, and when we begin overlap, we'll check and make sure that the pawn is what's overlapping. So we'll say cast, and we'll make sure it's this child pawn. So we'll say cast to the child pawn, this other actor. And if it is that child pawn, when we start overlapping, we will set owner to be that child pawn, which is owned by the player controller. So it will be owned by a player at that point. And in the end overlap, we will say, you know, if the child pawn is equal, equal to the owner, then we'll set the owner to be nothing. So now we are changing the owner in these functions. And I suppose we should check to make sure this is on the server. So if we have authority. So if we have the authority, we're going to change the owner. And then after we change the owner, let's try that deferred server RPC. So it was delayed server RPC. So internal to this, we make sure it's the server calling it. So if, if we call this on the server, it will just do nothing. Because inside of this, we have an has authority to check. So if it is not authority, as is, is it a client, then eventually call that server RPC. And so we'll do the delayed server RPC when you begin overlapping after we've changed the owner. And we'll do that delayed server RPC when we end overlapping after we've changed the owner to be nothing. And so this should let us see how this works. We'll also do it in begin play. So we're doing it in begin play. And what we'll do is we will drop a breakpoint here. We'll drop a breakpoint in the function. We'll drop a breakpoint here for the overlap and drop a breakpoint here. So let's compile this and fix up the errors. I would need to give a return type. So server func should be a void return type. Let's try compiling that. Make sure that we include semicolons. So we've successfully compiled the code, but we need an actor parent to that. So I'm going to create a new actor. So net owner test will be the parent. Select that. And if we open up this blueprint, we'll add a sphere so we can see this. And then we'll also add a sphere collision so for the overlap. So I'll make this larger. And I believe that's all we need for the net owner test. We will drop him into the level. But before we play it, let's make sure we drop our breakpoints. In the delayed multicast, I will go to the multicast RPC drop a breakpoint. In our server funk, I'll also drop a breakpoint. And if we play, so I'm on net mode client, one client. Now that we've got our breakpoints everywhere, if we click play, we can see that we hit begin play and we're on the server. So the delayed multicast we just called, and if we look in that, it checks if it was the authority, and it was. So it's going to set a timer and eventually call this net multicast funk. And now the delayed server RPC is going to try to do that, but if it steps in there, it's going to fail to check for not authority because this is the server and we only want to call a server RPC from a client. So it's going to step over that, ignore that logic. Now we're on the client, so client one, and it stepped over the multicast. So since it was not authority, it didn't do any of that. I'm not super concerned with that, but what we are concerned with is delayed server RPC. If we step into there, the client does not have authority, so that this passes and it sets that timer to call that server function RPC. So now if we continue, uh, the timer just ended and we called this net multicast and we are on the dedicated server. So that worked. The net multicast on the server, it was invoked after a delay and it executed on the server. If we step over that, the we're still in the net multicast, but now we're on the client. So that worked. The Effectively, the server executed the multicast and then it made to the client. And in this current example, we only have one client and one server. So there is no client too but the multicast worked as expected. However, we also did this delayed server RPC and we never saw the server RPC get called. And so what I'll do is I'll walk over there to that circle, which has collision around it, and it'll set me as the owner and call the RPC again. So let's walk over here. And so we just hit this notify begin actor overlap. We can roll that back so you can see it. So we are on the client actually, so this will fail to check so it is not does not have authority but it will call the delayed RPC so set it sets a timer for us and it's going to try to call that RPC 
And so now I continued and we hit this notify begin overlap and we're on the server this time. So this time it will set the owner to be the pawn. So we got the pawn, it's setting the owner. So now we actually have a valid net owner and it's gonna call this delayed RPC, which is gonna do nothing on the server side. So now we're waiting on the timer and bam, we hit the breakpoint in the server RPC. So in this way, you can see that we've changed the owner to be a valid net owner, which enabled us to call the server RPC. So we basically established that now this client owns an actor on the server and can call up this pipeline instead of just down this pipe. And so I'm gonna continue. And so while we're in there, I'm gonna walk out, which will remove me as the owner. And so we hit notify actor and overlap and we were on the client, so we did not bother changing the owner on the client. I'll just walk it back a little bit so we can see it just skips over has authority. It calls the delayed RPC, so it's gonna to try to set a timer again to call that RPC after three seconds. I continue, and now we ended the overlap on the authority, and so has authority will check. It's gonna go in here. It says, is the owner that pawn? It is, so let's clear out that owner. And then it's gonna do a no op with this. So. Now we stepped out, we were no longer the owner, and we're waiting on the timer to hit that breakpoint, and it never hit it because when it tried to call it, we were no longer the net owner. And you can actually see this kind of problem from the output log. So if we look over here, it says, no owning connection for actor net owner test C1. Function server func will not be processed. So this is kind of like a security policy. If you think about it on this map, um, we have two clients here. Does it make sense that this client could call a function on this guy's pawn and send it up here and have effects on that guy's pawn on the server. It doesn't. The only thing he should be able to call is functions for his pawn and have it go up and influence his pawn on the server. He really doesn't have the authority to, to influence this guy's pawn on the server. And so in this way, net owner kind of creates a security system for RPCs and restricts clients to being able to call RPCs only on stuff that they own and should be able to, to mess with on the server. So it's a little confusing. And hopefully that cleared it up, but it's one of the things when you first encounter it, you're really unsure as to what it all means unless you go digging through the blog and see that there isn't actually an error there talking about no any connection. So hope that helps. We will continue looking more at U functions and further videos.